Hi, Katie. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Celia. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Um, just as a little intro to myself, I uh, am Celia and I've been um, behind the scenes of this project and I help out Crudden and Screwed. Um, I just want to pass over to Katie. She is an absolute rock star in the flexible working world, but I'll let her introduce herself briefly now as well. Thank you, Celia. So hi everyone, I'm Katie, Katie Friedman. Um, I set up a Facebook group about two years ago now called Flexible Working for People Like Me. Some of you will be members and some of you won't ever have heard of it. But if you haven't heard of it, then come and join us. We're a Facebook group. There's about 28 or so thousand people now on there um, from all walks of life, all looking for the same thing, all wanting flexible working. So there's tons of support and help and advice, and flexible jobs. So um, come and join us if you feel like you could get some value out of being there. Amazing, thank you. It is a brilliant group. Um, I joined it recently and it's, there's, Katie actually posts quite a lot of jobs. So it's definitely a good one. Um, I, we're actually not talking about flexible working in this session though. Katie is kindly going to give us all some tips on how on earth we interview on Zoom because the world has changed. You know, there's a lot going to be a lot more remote working jobs, which is amazing. Um, but that means you've got to get the job and probably online. So um, let's just kick things off with what are the top things you need to think about when it comes to interviewing on Zoom? So I think that the first thing, we'll, we'll get into all of the detail, I think the first thing to think about is just your setup. Um, so let's, starting from basics, I think that what's really different to an in-person interview is that you're not going to the office in person, obviously, and you're going to be dialing in. And that in itself can cause quite a lot of anxiety around, is the technology going to work? Is everything going to go right? Have you used the platform before? And a lot of people who have been invited to Zoom interviews have actually never been on Zoom before. So we're quite familiar with it because we use it for business. But there's lots of people who will be invited maybe for Google Meets or um, Zoom or there's lots of other diff different video platforms. And most people aren't familiar with them, or well, not most, but if you're just interviewing for a job, you might not have used it before. So my first piece of advice, and this is really key and it sounds really obvious, but it's to sort out your tech, to practice, to download whatever the app is that they've asked you to download way in advance, get on, get familiar with it. There's nothing worse than on the day thinking, oh, I'll just click a link. And I've been there so many times when you've just gone to click the link and you're like, oh no, it's not working. And then suddenly you're stressed and you're late. So I think just the nature of it being online, just really set yourself up and practice and make sure that you're kind of familiar so that you don't get caught out on the day. Absolutely. And what about actual visual setup as well? So the visual setup is also really important. Um, I don't know, I do lots of these and sometimes I'm sitting in front of people who have got books falling off the shelves and dirty laundry in the background. So first, <laughs> first things first, set yourself up in a space that's kind of, uh, got a plain background or a tidy background so looking at both of our backgrounds now you've got some lovely pictures on the wall and you know and it's just all very uncluttered and the same with me I always position myself in front of this picture just so I feel like there's a tree in the picture and there's nothing else much going on to distract yeah. so I think it's position yourself at a table with a fairly neutral background and keep it quite clear because you don't want to be distracting the person by what's hanging off your shelves um, I always put my laptop on a box just because I think that um, it gives me that sort of eye line view. Um, so I don't know what other people do, but sometimes if you're sort of staring down at it or you're, you know, just make sure that your position is right so that you can use your hands and arms and gesture and, and feel like you're in the frame um, rather than just like this or, you know, so it's just really important to sort of feel like, and especially with video interviewing, just feel like you can have that sort of um, relationship, start to build it. Um, Put a glass of water on the table because you you might get parched and you might feel like you want one. Have your pen and paper on the table and to hand so you're not running off. Um, one big mistake is like test your audio. So, you know, sometimes people put headphones in and sometimes not. I know people who have been like running around the house looking for earphones because the, the audio is not working very well. So I just have it all ready. Close all your applications so nothing's buzzing and beeping. Turn your phone off. Make sure you've asked people in the house to stay out of your way, dogs, children, if possible. 
So there's lots of things that you can do just in setup in terms of setting yourself up. Um, and they all sound really obvious, but actually so many people can get them wrong. So that's my advice. And I will just add to that, that if you are distracted and someone does come in the room, and I'll probably talk about this later, style it out. So one of the things, and I think we'll probably talk about this later, is sort of how it can go wrong. But if somebody comes in the room and we've all seen those brilliant, um, you know, uh, videos of people who are having sort of interviews and their kids come in on sort of walking frames and kids come and sit on laps and so on. Um, and so my one piece of advice there is keep everyone out of the room. But if it fails and people start coming in the room or your kid walks in or the dog jumps up, I think the most important thing is how you deal with that. So it's not, not going to get you the job because your kid walked in or your dog's jumped up or your cat's been sick. It's kind of, if you start flapping and responding in some kind of like strange way, going, oh, no, then that just makes you look a little bit, yeah, like you just need to be calm and deal with it calmly. And I know inside you'll be absolutely dying. Um, but my biggest piece of advice is if it goes wrong, style it out, stay calm and just deal with it and don't start flapping because they'll be thinking, well, a very calm person here <laughs> yeah i guess in some ways that's kind of showing your personality right that's not, if something happens then that's a chance to kind of i don't know show absolutely yeah yeah brilliant so and what so, do you want them to see yeah like do you want them to see that person that's like get out i'm on an interview or you know or actually guys i'm just having a conversation can you just or give me one minute and go and deal with it is better yeah yeah, absolutely. Um, so what are any other obvious kind of mistakes that you could make? And actually, I have to say, when you've started talking about the environment already, I'm thinking this would not be the right environment for an interview for me. <laughs> oh, I don't agree. It's really clean and you've got nice pictures on the wall. Um, so other mistakes that are commonly made. So I think that one thing is that we're at home generally when we're doing these things. And that can mean that you can feel a little bit more casual, even though it, you're quite nerve wracking. You're not getting on the, in the car or on the train and going to the offices. And as you step into that sort of, you start to feel like you're in a new environment and it sort of, and it sort of sets you up for that interview. But I think you sort of have to talk yourself into, I'm doing the interview, get yourself into that headspace, give yourself that space before you get onto the interview to start to run through that script in your head. I'm now in interview mode, I'm moving out of whether it's mummy mode or other mode, and I'm getting into that headspace. I think it's really important because a mistake can be made that you sort of, you're running from shoving the kids in a room and lunch on the table or whatever it is that's distracting you to in an interview and you just don't, because you haven't got that journey, you can't transition. So I think it's, you know, a mistake often made is not transitioning into that new space. And sometimes being a bit casual, so about the setup, maybe it's what you're wearing, maybe you don't see um, what you're wearing for an interview, or your grooming, or your hair, or your makeup because you're in a rush, or maybe in the setup, or because home you just deal with it a bit more casually. It's still an interview, so treat it as an interview, and I think that can be a mistake. Um, just back to tech as well, just in terms of the tech setup and not being familiar with the platform, I think people make mistakes by not testing and doing all that stuff with which i've which i've talked about um audio camera all that kind of stuff so and i talked a bit about it before but that whole you can make mistakes by just how you respond to stuff so you know it is harder it generally is harder there's also lots of benefits to being on a video like this and we were just saying that automatically when we started this just because we can see each other we started to build that rapport and it's just so different to being on a call um, where you can't see somebody so you've got that relationship and you can build you know build a connection so on that um, note actually would you say then that people should push for a video call not a phone call definitely a hundred percent so if you can't be there in person the next best thing is a video call and i would suggest that every time over a phone call because with a video call you get a sense of who that person is and I know that there's, you know, people will talk about unconscious bias and so on, but it's not. Once you're in that interview situation, um, you know, it, it's about building a relationship and it's much easier to build a relationship through video, through seeing somebody than, than on a call. So absolutely, if you have a choice, always video and don't be afraid to video. Practice, get online with your mate if you, if, or, or somebody 
and, ha and have a practice, have a chat, do some video calls and start to familiarize yourself a bit with it so that it's not like the first time that you've been on and you're like a rabbit in headlights. <laughs> and what about, so like when, so when you turn up to an interview normally, um, you've got that, you know, you've traveled in for an interview, you've got that, how did you get here? You know, where have you traveled in from? Would you like a glass of water? Would you like a tea? You've got those kind of obvious things you sort of yes. naturally go through that make you feel a bit more comfortable. What about small talk? At the beginning of an interview zoom should you do it so that's a really good question and i think you need to be led a little bit by the interviewer on that i think that they'll well want to relax you into the call and hopefully they'll say how's your morning and they'll start a little bit of a chat before they sort of go straight into the to the interview um i think that you can build a rapport you can say how have you found in the moment the conversation is how have you found lockdown how are you finding working from home there's definite conversations that you can have um and i think that be led by the interviewer but it is nice to break down some of those barriers before you sort of get straight in um and try to be bring your personality to to the video so at the moment you and i are having a lovely conversation and i feel like i'm getting to know you and you're getting to know me and it's the same, it's a chat, essentially, whether you're in the room or not in the room, you know, we're having a nice chat and we're, you know, we're, we're flowing nicely and, and it's no different. Yeah, thank you. Um, what if it doesn't flow? So what if all of a sudden you get that awkward freeze face um, or your internet starts to cut out? How do you style that out? <sighs> so if your internet starts to cut out, you know, it, you feel that sort of rising panic, don't you? And, and, and sometimes when I'm on one of these calls and the internet starts saying it's unstable, it's unstable. And sometimes I'm in the middle of a Facebook Live when that's happening, I think, oh God, what am I gonna do? The best thing to do, if you can't hear the person interviewing you properly and it's cutting out or you feel that things are going wrong, it's just to say, hang on a second, the internet's um, connection's a little bit unstable. Would you mind just dialing? Should we just try again and dial back in? Or maybe we should move to, to a phone call. I think once you've started that, there's no point sitting there just thinking, oh, I can't really hear or I can't really see and, you know, and, and getting yourself in a panic and trying to hear every other word that they're saying. Mm -hmm. I think the best thing at that point is to say, um, I'm having a few tech issues. Should we try again? And if that doesn't work, maybe we should jump on the call and just take control of the situation and just don't sit there sort of thinking, oh God. Um, and the other useful piece of advice is just to make sure that the person interviewing you has your phone number and they have yours so that you know, you're know you ready to just jump off and, and wait for a phone call um, or phone them back so that you can move off the internet. I mean, you don't wanna be jumping on and off and on and off because it's just distracting. So it's probably better at that point just to go straight into a phone call and abort tech. <laughs> um, and actually just just in terms of good timing you froze a little bit when you were telling me that one <laughs> so that's a good perfect example. well there you go happen. yeah I, I i just put that in on purpose so that people can see <laughs> that it's live and it's happening <laughs> love it um but how is there are there any ways that you can kind of use it to your advantage and actually try and you know get your personality out there on video a little bit more than you know maybe you're a little bit more shy and reserved in interviews could this be an opportunity for you to kind of be a bigger character on zoom i think that you with video you need to be a slightly more um outgoing version of yourself if you can to get the, put your personality across you don't want to come across as manic and babbling you still need to be controlled <laughs> Um, and sometimes, you know, when you're trying to tell, show somebody your personality, you can be sort of crazy gesturing and you don't want to do that. You want to sort of maintain, you know, your position. Don't be poker faced. Use your hands if you want to. Use your face, smile, engage with the camera. Um, you know, often people sort of look around and they're looking at notes and looking over there and, you know, look at the camera. Because actually I'm looking at you and I probably should be just looking at the camera. Because when you're looking at the camera, that's the relationship you want to build because that's what they're seeing they're seeing what you're seeing in the camera um i think another great advantage of being on video is that actually whereas in the interview room you can sort of have your cv on the table and your notebook you can't stick post-it notes all around your laptop with key points that you want to get across or post-it notes behind the laptop with things that you might want to say and how you want to position yourself so it's quite a cheeky hack really just to stick some post-it notes up and to have that information to hand so that if you're asked a question 
you can just see it and just glance. Um, so I love that. I love that about video because when you're actually in the room, you, you know, you can't hide anything. You're literally there. Um, the other thing is, obviously, in a video, you don't have to have that clothes melt down because you only have to worry about your top and hair. So you don't have to wear high heels and you don't have to worry. So you totally relaxed about all of that because you could wake up that day and go oh my god I'm having a day and you know so so there are advantages to being on video you don't have to travel um obviously you can get your personality across I I would you know I would argue with anybody who got on a video that there isn't a way to get your personality across um it's not a difficult thing to do you have to get the camera um, smile and use your upper body, you know, to to create sort of a relationship. Yeah, absolutely. As as we're talking, I'm getting some tech issues here, but I hope you can still hear me. I did just get some tech issues. I was just thinking the yeah. same. Um, the other thing is just to finish. Actually, one good piece of advice is also to record yourself. So you might be able to set up a phone or some way of recording it yourself, so that you can watch it back so many people get off um video interviews and like you know they don't feel like they did well they don't feel like they performed and they sort of i speak to them after and they're like oh it was awful and i'm like well it probably wasn't but they feel like because it was on video um you know they didn't necessarily come across that well so it's quite useful just to film yourself doing an interview and even if it was a horror show you can watch it back and take learnings from that the next time and think well i could have smiled more i wasn't looking at the camera I wasn't doing this, I could have said that. So I think just recording yourself doing a video call, doing a conference or an interview, is a really helpful way just to learn about how to do it better next time. Yeah, I think that's really, really good advice actually. What about if um, nerves hit you and you just kind of freeze for a minute? Were there any tips that you've got for kind of how you can, because it feels like it'd be more obvious on a video if that happened. Do you have any advice on how you can kind of try and overcome that a little bit? I think just stall and say, sorry, I've lost my train of thought, or could you just repeat that question again? I mean, do you mean freeze as in you panic and you freeze? Yeah. Yeah. Like you would in an interview. Yes. So I would again style that out and say, I'm so sorry, um, I've lost my train of thought. What would just, can you just repeat the question again? Um, and have them repeat the question, which just buys you that little bit of time to sort of get your brain into gear. I mean, I think it's the same as if you're in person. Sometimes you are just in an interview and they ask you a question and you think, I'm so busy thinking about what to answer or the next question, I've forgotten the question and now I've forgotten the answer. So just take a pause, take a breath, take a sip of water, take a moment, um, ask them to repeat the question and just breathe. Um, you know, I, I don't think that um, people should be afraid of video interviews. I think they're great and an exciting new way to connect with people remotely. Um, and I don't think it should hinder anybody from getting a job and from getting their personality across in the right way. I think it's an incredible, like, gift, <laughs> really. You know, can you imagine if coronavirus had happened at a time when there was no tech and everyone was stuck at home? So it's, it's amazing that we can build these connections. And I think we're all in the same boat. And actually, at the moment, people are being a lot more... Um, uh, understanding if stuff goes wrong because it is new to everybody so I think that just by saying I'm really sorry this is my first video interview or I'm not used to doing these sorts of things um, bear with me it's just it's just being honest and it's not going to detract you from getting a job I think people um, employers are very understanding we're all in this together and we've all been through such an emotional turbulent time and this is all new so I think that there's nothing wrong in saying um, you know, I'm really enjoying this. This is a new experience for me or, you know, just, just explaining that. I think, again, that helps to build a, a rapport and a relationship with the person who's interviewing them. Um, and it's just about being human, really. And if the person interviewing you is an understanding of that, then I'm not really sure you want to work for them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what if your um, video actually puts you off? Is there a way of turning that off? What do you mean your video puts you off? So if you're on a Zoom and you can see yourself and you can see them, is there any way you can kind of um, hide, your, hide your view? Oh, yes, you can turn it off. So you can turn the cameras off. But I'm not sure that you'd want to. Why would you want to do that? Well, that's the thing. I mean, if you're, I guess, I guess what, to your earlier point, you need to just embrace it, right? Because I know some people are camera shy, um, but how could they maybe sort of overcome that hurdle? 
So you could turn it off, but I think that you're putting yourself even more in a position to not be able to build rapport. So I think that, yeah, I think that, I mean, often when I'm doing these, sometimes, well, not often, but sometimes you can lose picture and you can lose the image. And I find it really disconcerting to be talking to somebody where either you can see them or they can see you, but you can't see each other. I think that when it really works, you can, you know, bounce off each other and see each other. Um, I, I mean, if you are much more comfortable to turn yourself off so that they can see you, then do it. But even just seeing myself here, it's helping me <laughs> to sort of bring my personality to life. And I think if I couldn't see myself, I'd find that much more off-putting. But everybody is different. So whatever works for you, as long as they can see you and you can see them, then if you want to turn your camera off, because your camera show, I do. But I think if they've invited you for a video interview, then you should be on the video and not sort of turn it off, not turn cameras off. I think that's really a uh, really good point what you just said though actually seeing yourself can help you kind of be yourself a little bit more. yeah so again yeah. You use it to your advantage exactly so on the video I'm thinking I can see myself and I can see how you're seeing me and I don't want to get too distracted by that but it helps me to build that relationship with you yeah absolutely and then the last thing actually um that I had to ask you was what about that awkward ending? So there's, you know, when you're in an interview in an office, you're, you know, you leave and they show you out of the office and you have that kind of chat and then, you know, the end. Yeah. How do you get over that? How do you handle an, a nice, uh, a nice ending and make it not awkward? Again, I'd say it's kind of down to the person interviewing you. I mean, hopefully they're experienced enough to be able to end the interview in a really nice way. Time will be running out. You'll both I think that most important is not to be in a rush to get off the call. So um, give yourself a little bit of extra time. And that's really important because if you're sort of sensing that time's running out and you've got to rush back to your children or you left dinner in the oven and it's burning, you'll feel that sense of frenziedness to go. So I think it's as it comes to an end, wind it down naturally have those natural conversations where you say, so how do I, what, what will the next steps be? Just talk to me about that, you know, what the next steps, when should I expect to hear? All of those questions. And if you have run over, don't be sort of, okay, well, um, that was really nice. Thank you very much. You know, just keep your, keep yourself calm. Um, you know, let it end naturally. There'll be natural break points at the end of your questions. And they'll say, well, thank you so much. That was so lovely. And you'll say, I really thoroughly enjoyed meeting you. It was great, thank you so much for your time. And I'm really looking forward to next time. And I think just like any meeting, say thank you very much, okay. And then you're like, leave meeting, who's gonna leave first? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's the etiquette. Again, I'd say let them leave the meeting first. So you're still sitting there smiling. Thank you very much, that's lovely, thank you. And then they've left the meeting and you're still there and then you leave the meeting. So you don't want to be that one who sort of hits end meeting and leave them sitting there because you're desperate to run off and take the chicken out of the oven. So just, um, you know, just be calm, wind it down slowly, ask all the right questions, um, thank them very much for their time. And then you could follow up. I mean, I always tell people to follow up with an email if you are in direct contact and you have got their email address to say, thank you so much for your time. It was really great to meet you on, that, on the video call. Um, you know, and I'm really looking forward to hearing next steps and your feedback. And then you sort of closed it off really nicely. Brilliant. I really, really, I think that's brilliant. Um, is there anything we've missed? That was, I think that was a really good kind of overview. Uh, but if there's anything else that you want, that you think that we should add? Um... I just say embrace it. You know, don't, don't be afraid. Embrace it. There's nothing, for me now, it's become very natural. And I think the most important thing, and I said this at the beginning, is to just try and make it nat as natural as you can. Um, and, if you're, and if you try and make it natural and don't overthink it and just treat it as you would any normal interview where you're, you know, you're sitting in front of somebody, whether you're physically there or not physically there, it's just about you know, building that relationship, smiling, showing them that you're interested and interesting, going through all those points. And just not worrying about the camera and the fact that you're not there in person because it shouldn't make any difference to your success um, in getting a job and actually know that we're all in the same boat now there's no experts particularly sitting there being interviewed who are going to do an any better job than you and if you're quite a shy person that's okay too that's your personality so you don't have to come on and be somebody who you're not just present yourself in your best possible light 
um, you know, be enthusiastic. There's nothing worse than sitting here talking like this, answering questions and not smiling because no one's going to engage with you and you sound really boring. So it's about smiling and using your inflection in your voice because your voice is really, really important. And that's what they're hearing. They're hearing your voice and they're seeing your face. So, um, so just use all that to your advantage. And remember that if you sit there nervous and you're sort of sitting there like a statue and talking in a really monotone voice and checking your notes and looking really petrified, it's not going to get the best version of you across. So enjoy it um, and just put your best foot forward. And you know what? If you muck it up, you'll do better next time. That was absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much, Katie. And just a reminder, um, it's Flexible Working for People Like Me. That's the Facebook group, isn't it? Exactly. Flexible Working for People Like Me. Come and join us. Come and say hello. Come and look for jobs. Come and have a chat. Um, and there's tons of advice um, on this, on interviews and CV writing and how to write a LinkedIn and how to get a job and how to ask for flexible working. So there's all sorts of brilliant stuff that goes on there every day. So yes, come and say hello. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Katie. Thank you for having me. I hope you all found that useful. Um, and if you want any more tips and tricks, you can contact me, come and find me on the Facebook group and I'm happy to ask, answer any questions. Amazing. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Celia. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Bye, Katie. Bye.